pop with a stud through it. They're already done. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's been a little while, but we're going to be showing you a little bit of the process behind the development and design of these new Corvette rear upper control arms. We've actually been selling these for quite a while. Um, initially, we stress test them using our computer analysis, but uh, since we have this new machine, we haven't come up with a name of it yet. We just call it the destroyer. With this machine, we're able to load up these arms and destroy them to the point of failure, wherever that failure may be. Now, when you have a full assembly and you have a computer simulation, it's gonna show you where the highest stress points are and the design of the arm is basically resembles where we didn't want the arm to bend and then you create a gusset for it and it doesn't bend there anymore. So it's obviously more complicated than that, but with this, you're able to test if the welds are gonna fail, if the hardware is gonna fail, if something else will fail outside of the actual shape and design of the arm. And uh, it's pretty fun to do it too. You get to just overload things, five, six, seven, eight thousand pounds and see what happens. It's a lot of fun. Um, and then it gives us really good data. We, uh, we collect the data by incrementally loading up the arm from 500 pounds to 1,000 to 1,500 to 2,000. And at each point, we're measuring the amount of deflection that's in the arm and how well it returns back to its original shape. And that information is also extremely important for the stiffness characteristics of the control arms as well. So without further ado, these are the Corvette rear uppers. This is the process behind pretty much every product that we make. So we're excited to show you guys. It's a lot of fun on, uh, on how we do that. Ah, uh, it moved. An eighth of an inch. I don't know. Welcome home under something. We're at 2,500. Let's move maybe a sixteenth after that. Let me know when it breaks. Oh, it just broke. Rain, we're at three. And nothing's happened. 35. And it's still no deflection, really. I mean, that piece of dome doesn't really replicate what would actually be there if you had taper up with a stud through it. It wouldn't have that much leverage on it. They're like maybe this small. Right. Yeah, there's, there's my paper. number, 4,000. Did I say 39? I was thinking 69, 69. I don't like being at eye level with it. 5,000. We're at 5,000 pounds with 3 eighths deflection overall. That's really good. And there's just the slightest, I mean, it's holding 5,000 pounds. There's just the slightest bow in the arm. So far, you're way wrong. You're wrong. No. <laughs> it's going to be violent when it lets go. <laughs> The plate on the uh, right side of the arm yeah. is lifted completely off the table. Right now there's 6,000 pounds of pressure on that end um, and it's lifting the plate, the mounting point. It's actually bent the, it's bent both of the adjusters. You can kind of see both the adjust, black adjusters. That one. <laughs> that one's holding a lot of pressure but that makes sense. The majority of the pushing force is on that mount and then we're almost pulling from the other one so you're going to see that deflection on that uh, front mount. Six thousand. So you can see everything go back to zero and I might just load it up all in one go just for the video up to six thousand without stopping because here on our chart we just load it up by 500 pounds and then we measured the deflection at each 500 pound increment. And it really didn't deflect much. Overall, it moved 3 eighths of an inch, um, which is literally nothing at 6,000 pounds. Uh, most OEM arms would be uh, not connected anymore at that point. No, the welds all look And the, yeah, we're checking the welds, we're checking everything. It looks like those adjusters 
I'd be curious way more well on that. the force if the adjusters were like at their way maximum tense. length out. That yeah, would be interesting. Yeah, like extend the adjuster all the way out. All right, I'm gonna load it up to 6,000 quickly just so the video has like a nice full pull. Oof. Oh, it is buckling. Right it's over 7,000 pounds. It's gonna buckle right now. Uh, he just started to twist at the end of the arm. Oof. Hey, man, everything just like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See the majority of the uh, deflection is actually in the adjustable joints. The arm itself is just ridiculously solid. Um, the welds are good. So, I mean, when I tried to bend the handbrake, which is half inch alloy like this, it really didn't want to bend. So I, I bet you it would see like eight, nine thousand. And once you get up there, you start risking. This is still pretty tight. You start risking like everything else. These snapping and then things flying, and we don't want to like destroy our stuff above and beyond. Anything, like, uh, over, anything over five thousand pounds is uh, yeah. right way now. over what it would need to be. So, like if you hit a wall, then the force direction is going to be pushing it into itself. Um, it's a bit different. This would be like your load that the car would be putting on itself under acceleration and braking would be like this. Um, but on impact, I mean, this is just this is just to show you the integrity of the welds, and I can assure you these adjusters have never bent like that, and we use them all on all kinds of kits. So to see them bend already says this arm has seen more force than what any other arm has already seen, and it's still holding true. So yeah, it's good. It's a good test. Whatever's left in there. Still well, we can try it. Yeah. yeah and I set all this up. <laughs> My setup didn't even fail. I think that because you weld these in the wrong spot, you know, except for putting the bumps in the wrong If someone actually spot. installed these, they would have to be this far yeah. out, just because you put them in the wrong okay, spot. Okay, chill. <laughs> you did put them in the wrong spot. Yeah, you put it just because, like, <laughs> you did it wrong. Oh, these are wrong, right? <laughs> Yes, I'm aware. Yeah, I'm like, let's break those because they're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Can I see this for a second? Ray's just crying in the background. <laughs> We're just lengthening it way out to simulate, to simulate it, it being lengthened out on a car. You probably wouldn't ever run them this far out, but we're just gonna see what happens. So pretty much, the longer you thread out these double adjusters, the less amount of heim joint or rod end is inside of the arm body itself. So the heim joint's only this long and it's probably outside of this casing now. It'll just bend right after the heim joints end, which is right, should be right around there and down. I'm not spreading. So we should just start to see that failing. Okay, we'll go right to seven. What do you up, think? Man. What's your prediction? I don't know, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. They're already done. Oh! Yeah, so there you go. Oh, yeah. They're already done. Oh! Did you have the weak one you touch? Yeah. Oh, boom, look at it that. It was right at the very Right end. at the tip. Yeah. Which means it was delayed, so it was probably like 35. Yeah. Heim joint inside of the body. Even if it's only like one thread. What What you would do to use these though, is just run with them, extended run it with extended heim joint. Yeah. Definitely. I agree. After seeing that, 100%. <laughs> yeah. What was it at? Um, I, I saw 27, but it's usually really delayed. Uh, probably like 35 that that happened at. Get you some of that. And the arm just, it okay. barely, I don't even think it curved. Like, it did, I put a flat and straight edge on it and the arm looks basically flat. It looks oh, like it's a completely flex pipe. Oh, it's yeah. smushed the threads. 
Yeah. It was like so basically it, it, it won't now. it won't break. The amount that the heim joint is inside yeah, of the adjuster, it will not right break here. in the adjuster. Uh, it broke no, it broke with this down. like completely flush. So if it had just one more thread inside of this, it probably would have bent quite a bit more and then broke. It didn't bend at all. So here is the uh, tested control arm. As you can see, it still has retained its shape completely um, without even showing any signs of permanent deformation. So if you put a, a level across this, it's actually still perfectly flat. Even though we overloaded it to beyond 7,000 pounds, which is significantly higher than any amount of load that this arm will see under normal driving and under racing. Um, and this is super evident for a number of reasons. Based on what we've tested before, we know that that load will never be seen um, on the car. Obviously in the case of an accident, you're gonna see loads like that. That's, that's why we test this. But um, basically we've been using these for a long time and we've never seen one bend or fail on a vehicle before. So when we do see one fail, then we know that we've exceeded more load than what we've ever seen before, which is, which is great. So essentially, when these, these are the double adjusters. This is what we use to lengthen and shorten the arm, which adjusts your camber, in this case, on the car, um, without having to remove it. So the outside thread is a right hand, the inside thread is a left hand, you turn it, it lengthens. They're a beautiful thing, but the problem is if you adjust them so far out that the rod end inside extends beyond the housing of the control arm, that is the uh, weakest point of the control arm because when the threads are not engaged inside of itself, it just creates a thin wall too. Basically, you're relying on the um, integrity of just this threaded adjuster and not the um, rod end itself anymore, as you saw on the video. So when it was within a safe adjustable range, the arm was able to withstand over 7,000 pounds of force. And over 7,000 pounds of force, you're gonna see things to start to catastrophically fail, like straps or um, other things that you don't really want flying off. So we've, we've exceeded what we wanted to see, which is based on the original components, is around 5,000 pounds. Original components start permanently deforming between four and 5,000 pounds on average. And at four or 5,000 pounds, original control arms come with rubber bushings and those things are just deflecting like crazy. So, whereas this had almost no deflection, we can show the chart um, and the graph of deflection in the video or like right now, right there. Um, this arm had little to no deflection, um, especially when loading it up. That's because this is a bearing mounted control arm, solid bearings. There is no room for deflection, whereas the bushing ones are going to move a lot. The bushing, the rubber on this side is going to compress, the one on this side is going to extend, and the arm is going to rotate and allow that wheel to move a lot, especially up in that range. So the deflection, there's no comparison. This is a far stiffer and higher performance control arm. and then. Beyond 5,000 pounds, you start seeing those control arms bend and fail. Um, this saw over seven, so it's well within the range of um, the welds holding, the control arm uh, structural design holding, and when we extended these out further than their safe adjustable range, that's when we saw an obvious, an obvious failure, um, which is basically this broke right just after the, the rod end's length. So the rod end was only inside of this adjuster uh, right where this broke. You see, yeah, the other piece is still in there. So you can see that this broke off right there. It's cool to see this stuff actually fail um, and then have, a me have measurable data to go off of with um, like seeing it happen firsthand. And this is what we take in and use to improve on further and future designs. There are definitely instances where somebody wants more adjustable range within the control arm that we already sell. And the solution to that would be, well, we know that the body of the control arm can handle the load. What we should do 
is how do we get more thread engagement inside of the body of the arm and inside of the adjuster? Well, we do have extended rod ends that we can sell for additional cost if somebody wants a camber range outside of what this can allow. So with that, we know what the range is, we know what the limits are. Now we can sell a product confidently and know that it's gonna work for you. So right after this video, a couple days later, we're gonna be installing these onto my C6. Um, showing you the installation process and how easy it is to adjust and tune your alignment. The biggest thing on these Corvettes is when you lower them that they gain camber and for drifting that's bad. We uh, have a lot of camber wear on the tires and we're not using the full tire while drifting and it's kind of wasting the, uh, the grip or the entire life that we can get out of it. So we want to extend these arms a little bit and bring in the lower as much as possible to square up those wheels so that we have good camber wear on the tires and we use the full tire every time. You're gonna need these to do that. So these are gonna be a big seller. They already have been a big seller. This is just an in-depth video on how we go about coming up with these. So that's it. See you guys on the next video where we do the install.